guys, welcome back. Day five. They're not really days, they're more of big old blocks of time I have to work on it when I'm not drenched in sweat. It's actually uh, nighttime of the last clip, but it finally cooled off. First of all, I want to apologize for the audio in the previous clips. I had the Bear GoPro out here, and the audio, well, my voice was kind of low, and that was adjusting the auto gain, and then when I had to normalize it in post, it really brought up the noise. So I'm trying it with the skeleton case on this time, and I think that'll kind of even everything out. So hopefully we won't have that annoying background hiss. Now maybe you didn't notice it, but I notice it. And, uh, you know, I want to try to fix things. So I'm just going to continue on here, taking stuff off. I'm going to try to get some more of the front off right now. I'm trying to keep it fairly balanced on the stand here. We're just about done. Now I don't have a lot more to do before I'm kind of stuck because I'm waiting for some parts to come in. Tonight I'd like to get these lights off, front fender off, the crash bars off, and uh, the speedo and the tank. Set those two aside and then that'll probably wrap it up for today. That's the plan anyway. Assuming everything goes fairly well. Now, I do have some more stuff on the way. I bought a new steering bearing kit and I upgraded from the stock roller ball bearings to flat, or not roller, uh, the, the factor comes with ball bearings and I upgraded to tapered roller bearings. So when those come in, I'll put those in. And I've never done a shock oil change. I'll figure that out once I get everything off the bike here and take those apart. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, tires are on their way. I will take these off and polish up and get the rims ready. As soon as the tires come in, I'll take those up to my local shop, have them do the tire change. I don't mess with that here. It's not worth having the tools. And I'll set those aside and be good to go. I bought a used shock with only a few thousand miles on it. And shocks, the age doesn't matter, just the mileage. So about 20% of the life this one has on it used. So that'll be just fine. And the reason I did that, they're 244 bucks new. I got it for $32 shipped. You can't complain about that. Roller bear, or yeah, the, uh, the tapered roller bearing kit was $27, and that included tax because that was from a shop in Florida. You know, the stuff's just dirt cheap to do it yourself. Let's get going. First thing I'm going to do here is, let's see. Well, I guess I'll take this gauge cluster off. Looks like we need a little tiny Allen wrench. Get that out of the way. Should, you, should just be one bolt and then one electrical connector. And I'm sorry for making the last video so long. I really didn't intend for it to go that long. I want this series to kind of be a little shorter to the point. Just kind of fun to watch. It's, this isn't meant to be a, a how-to thing. You know, I, I can't really do maintenance how-to videos for the stuff I'm doing here because it's not going to be on a stock bike, it's not really going to help that many people. So I kind of went a little overboard going into the details on the brake bleeding. But you know, it was there and I did it. But from now on they're going to be a little bit shorter. For example, I'll be back as soon as I have this off. There we go. That was a little tricky because there's this tab that I couldn't see. I could barely feel it with my fingernail. It's towards the front. So you just push that in with the very tip of your fingernail and wiggle the whole thing back out. Now I'm to the point where I'm starting to pull things off I'm going to reuse. So it's important that you save fasteners if you're doing anything like this. I'm going to go get some little baggies and some post-it notes so I can put screws in. Since this is a part I can't put the fasteners back into because this is going out for painting. And I gotta take off any little grommets like this you know, before it goes out for the paint. And I guess I might as well take these emblems off while it's nice and up here and mounted. Now on this, it's just gonna be these big three screws here. Take the whole gauge cluster out and we'll swap it over for the new bezel. So I just ran out to the store because I was out of baggies. And I was out of fishing line, and I need the fishing line because this is how it's really easy to take any kind of badging off a car or any kind of vehicle. You heat it up to soften up the glue, and then you basically use this like dental floss. You know, get yourself a couple feet of it, wrap it around your hands. Once that glue's soft, it cuts through it like butter. 
and then you can just clean up the residue with Goo Gone. That works really well. But I'm going to wait to do this because I was thinking probably not the smartest thing in the world to heat up the tank with fuel and vapors in it because I still have probably half a gallon of gas in there. So I'm going to get the tank off before I do that, dump that gas back out into my can, find my funnel, and now I'll do that at a later point. No hurry. I'm going to go ahead and get these controls off just so I don't have anything possibly banging around like that. One Allen bolt left to take off of the switch there. Just had my tool there. There. Hopefully this should be bright enough. I think the GoPro is going to be fine. I had to turn some of these extra lights off in here because, man, the bugs were coming in. I had cicadas landing on me and palmetto bugs and not fun. So back to just the uh, fluorescent shop lights in here. Should be fine. Okay, guess I'll take the bars off next. We've got chrome caps. Look like they're in pretty decent shape. And looks like maybe I need a little screwdriver just to pry those off. Should have some Allen bolts underneath. Ah, it started to bugger that one up. I'm going to get a much bigger screwdriver. They seem to be quite stuck in place. Yeah, they are just really kind of corroded in place on the other side. Not the best design. If I rock it back and forth, there we go. It just comes out of there. They're just plastic, you know, chrome looking caps. I could probably find some new ones because they've got some of the chrome rubbed off. Probably super cheap. So I'll add those to my list of things to look for at least. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. Like I said, they're not really wanting to come out. So might not have a choice but to replace them. Or I could just leave them. Depends on if you want the more finished look. Yeah, this one is just kind of tearing apart. You could always spin them around and put the torn up part on the inside because it's kind of on an angle. You can't see anything towards the center. You just can on the outside edges. So that's probably what I'll do. That way you only know the damage is there if you look. Now the real question is going to be how easy are these Allen bolts going to come out. If these are corroded like this, you know the bolts underneath are too. Okay, before I do this, I want to put a towel over the tank. Because when I loosen these up, those bars are going to come down. And I don't want them dinging this tank. I don't care about the paint, but I do care about dents. Because I am reusing that tank. So I'm going to loosen these one side at a time. Let it down gently. Alright, this one should break it free. There they go. Alright. Make some cheap poor man's apes. <laughs> Cut them off here, make some little clip ons. Washers on here. Make sure you don't lose any kind of washers when you're taking parts off. Sometimes they stick to the bolt, sometimes they stick to the part. Let's take a look. This one wants to stick to the part. There we go. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and take the tank off now. Get that out of the way safely. Looks like just one bolt down here. And then I should be able to tip it up, disconnect the fuel line and the fuel sender. And I think that's going to be it. I think it just slides back. Let's see. I need... Ellen again. Stick 
that in a baggie and label it. I'm also going to put in all the rubber bushings. There's two up here. And one big one down here. I'd have to take that off after I get the tank loose. An electrical connector right down here. There we go. What I had to do is push it up. little bit of fuel leaking, nothing major. Alright, that should be it for the tank. And we should be able to take it off and back. I'm going to dump this out back into my can. We'll continue on. Got the tank drained. There's always that last little bit that won't come out, so I got it with the cap off on the front porch. Leave that overnight. That'll evaporate just fine. Don't do that inside the garage. You don't want these fumes building up. You know, I've got an AC unit right here overhead in the garage. Starting a car up involves some sparks. You don't want those fumes just lingering around. Know what I mean? Let's continue taking stuff off. These plastic covers gotta go. They just clip on it, looks like, at least on the top. And on the side. Well, that's kind of ugly looking. Got a wiring harness here. Tank only comes down to up here so I would see this kind of stuff. Well, I guess I will leave these. That's okay. So I'll save those panels. Get the other one in a minute. Got the coolant here. I'm going to do a complete coolant flush. I'll do that once I get some more stuff off of it. I guess I'll go ahead and take these crash bars off next. Looks like two big bolts and one down at the bottom here. Looks like it also holds on the floorboard. Let's see what size I need. It's pretty chunky. I'm guessing an 8. Yep. That was pretty loose, actually. Not complaining about that. Now these fasteners look like they go with the bike, not the bar. It's an optional Suzuki bar. Because it has this clip here to hold probably an electrical line. Yep, electrical bundle line. So I'm going to run this back in after I take the bar off. I'll clean all this up later before final assembly. But these don't go with the bar, they go with the bike. So I got one on the other side, two more on the bottom. So I'll go ahead and get the rest of this off right now.
There we go. That's not too bad. So let's really examine this. <laughs> That's awesome. What I thought were fairly minor surface scratches are just Mars. They're disappearing, just rubbing it with my finger there. That's where it was tipped over on its left side. So these are in excellent condition. Good. That's some money back. That's one of the few items that I do expect to sell fairly easily. Because it is a factory part. It's one that didn't come on the bike. And it's one that a lot of people like to add to their bike. Okay, I'm going to keep these fasteners in a bag. Pegs are, or the uh, floorboards are still securely on there. I don't need them in there right now. And we'll just wait. I'm labeling the, the bags of little miscellaneous screws, but for big obvious stuff like that, I don't need to. I'm just putting them in separate bags. If you've got like a big divided tray or organizer or one of those little drawer things, those work great too. I just have a crap load of bags and, well, I usually do. That's what I usually use. Had to go get some more, obviously. Okay, continuing on the front, let's go take the uh, light assembly off. Then we'll get to the front fender and then call it a day, I think, or a night. Whew! It is still muggy out. Now let's see. This is this is kind of a oddball because some previous owner put this on and it's homebrew wiring. So I don't want to go just snipping things because I need to get new parts in to see exactly how I'm going to wire everything in. So I want to try to take everything off as complete as possible. I need to see how it's actually attached. Got a loom up here that holds all the controls. That can stay. Looks like uh, two Allen bolts in the front here, but I can't get to them with the headlight on, so that means this must come off first. And I need that light again. Can't really see how it's attached yet. Got some, some bolts coming through and some nuts. I don't think those are for mounting. Looks like there's a, almost an L bracket holding the can here to the lower triple tree clamp. Kind of hard to get to those bolts though. What's underneath? A couple nuts. Hmm. Could take those off, I suppose. What's over here? Well, let me figure this out get a game plan and we'll take it off. Okay, here's my plan of attack. I think these side lights have to come at least loose first. I've got a nut on the bottom and the wires are coming down. I've got wire ties holding the wires and all the wires go into the can. I've got two Phillips screws on either side of the can and I think that will release the front bezel and I'll probably see all the connections and mounting nuts inside this. So I'm going to hit these nuts, loosen them up, hit these Phillips screws, and see what happens inside. Boy, what a stupid design. Did you guys see that? <laughs> that was the way to do it. The nut had barely enough room to get a wrench in there and turn it one facet. Luckily, I only had to turn it two facets to get it to be finger loose. Ran that down. It's just sitting on the electrical cables. Popped the light up, folded it down, and then there's barely enough angle. I did just start to bugger up the threads getting this out. Luckily, it wasn't stuck. I would have been in real trouble if it was corroded in there, I'll tell you that. But uh, yeah, definitely not putting any of these stupid ass lights on the side of it. Not made for it. Not, not the way this uh, Phillips screw is inside. And I hate Phillips screws. Ugh. All right, I'm going to get the other side and we'll get these uh, lights figured out. The other side was a bit of a bugger. What I ended up doing was holding the flat of the nut because it was kind of stuck and twisting the light. Luckily, there's enough slack in the wires where it let me do that. I'm going to see if I can just 
gently get this off. There are pry points, but I'd rather not pry if I don't have to, and I didn't have to. Cool. Oh yeah, and there's all the electrical connections. Wow, there is a lot of room in there. The actual headlight only takes about half of what you see. Cool. Well, that'll leave me plenty of room to put my components for the HID lights coming in. So we've got a whole mess of stuff in here. A lot of factory wiring. We've got factory wiring loom. And some homebrew wires. Some stuff tapped in. I don't want to go cutting stuff right now. I need to see exactly what's what first. Looks like uh, headlights on its own little circuit. What I want to do is get rid of the wires going outboard to these lights. Follow them in. I can definitely disconnect those. They're on these single little wires. See where they come in. Looks like this one. Push it through, see where it goes. That's going over here. Okay, so that is one of the ones that got tied in here. That's feeding, looks like the positive to the main headlight. So they're just drawing off, looks like switched power, so they only come on with the engine. Okay, let me figure this out. Back in a sec. Looking at the wire closely, it was just one wire needed to snip, that one that they had kind of pinched on. Man, I hate these connectors. And then what they did is uh, ran it series from one to the other. No big deal there. So I got the entire light out. And this is the last remaining wire. So now it's 100% stock wiring at least. Disconnected the headlight itself. I'll take this entire assembly off later on. I see some surface corrosion on the bracket. I'm just gonna take that off and I'll hit that with some black Rust-Oleum. That'll be totally fine. And what I'll do with those plastic pieces is just hit them with a, a flat black plastic paint, which it remains a little bit flexible and that'll be fine there. I was kind of hoping I don't know. You know, I, I may still leave them off. I would just have to figure out something to do with this corner. Maybe I can fabricate something, or I can maybe find something online. And the only reason is I want to weatherproof it, because it's got these wiring connectors right here. It's not so much a visual thing. I like the way it looks. I like seeing the engine head here. You know, that's totally fine. But... I can't have this open to rain. That's, that would drive the rain right into the wiring connection. So, probably going to use those covers. They don't look bad, but the one on the other side has marks from the second key hitting, which I'm going to solve by getting my tank rekeyed so I'll only have one key. Normally on my bikes, I just keep the bike key. It's usually on a fast connect to the rest of my keychain. I don't dangle keys on my bikes because I don't like scratches. So, that should be just fine. Now to get the rest of this light bar off, I finally have clearance here to where I can use an Allen wrench. And it looks like two. They're fairly stuck. There we go. Woo! That really broke free. And these two should allow me to take the turn signals and this added on chrome bar off. Be back in a second. That's interesting. These two bolts aren't centered. The one on this side is more towards the center of the frame than this one. This one I have clearance to get my Allen wrench in there. It's not hitting the light. The light is centered, but over here it's inward about half an inch. I wonder why that is. I'm sure is making this last one a pain in the butt, so I gotta use the short end. Okay, and off comes the front light bar. Now I'm going to save these bolts and put them aside because I don't know if I'm going to need these for whatever I put on or if whatever I put on is going to have its own. Yeah, look at that. They're not centered. I mean, it's not a defect. That's the way the bike is. But I wonder why they do that. There's nothing behind it. 
Nothing for it to hit. That's just the way it's cast. Very strange. Okay. Where'd that other bolt go? See, I'm losing parts. Either I'm getting tired, or I'm just crazy, and it's right in front of my face. <laughs> oh, come on now. I want to see if there's any kind of quick connect to get these out of the way. Let's see where they fish in. And, yep, looks like these bullet connectors right here will do the trick. Carefully disconnect them. One. There's two. There's three. It's the left side, color coded. Don't need those. Those will be sold. Let's see where this one comes in. Right here. One. Two. Three bullet connectors. Ah, 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 ah. That's gone. Sell that. Okay. Fender, and then I'm calling it a knife. This should be pretty simple. We've got, looks like, four bolts on the inside. Bolts or nuts? That looks like bolts. And looks like maybe 10 mil. Where'd my 10 mil wrench go? Yep, 10 mil. Oh, that's on there good. This is when I want those ratcheting box wrenches. You guys remember those when they were, they hit the market? I remember, I was a kid, I mean, it, it was in the 80s, and everybody I knew that was into tools at all, they were getting those as gifts. And I think my dad got some, because I remember using them. They weren't mine. I was, like I said, a kid living at home. I remember using them, and they broke like nothing. I mean, they were so cheap. And then it seems like they just disappeared from the market forever until fairly recently. And I just noticed them at Sears. I don't know about your Sears around wherever you guys live, but here, man, they are a ghost town. I mean, I go in there, and it's usually when I need one really special tool, like a, a gimungus socket. I had to get one for my wife's last car. It was a Mini Cooper, and... I can't remember what I was doing. It might have been for the oil change to take out the cartridge or something. It, it needed like a, like a 32 mil socket or 27. I don't know. I've got a few big ones for you know one use. I had to buy these things. And I, I used to go in there and it would be like, you know, 25 bucks for the one socket, the one special size. Well, the last time I went in there, $4.95. That stuff is dirt cheap, and they don't carry hardly anything that they used to anymore. Last time I went in there, they had this huge clearance sale going on, and I didn't get there when they opened, but there were a couple guys ahead of me. They basically cleaned them out. I mean, they had literally a cart full of goods, and the guy ahead of me spent like... Am I going the wrong way? Yep, sure. The guy ahead of me spent less than 40 bucks for an entire cart full of there's all kinds of miscellaneous tools and, you know, little things. Oh, come on now. There we go. He just scored. And it seems like there's been something like that going on every time I go in there. But I feel really sorry for the people working there. The one I go to is at a, at a mall. I mean, that should tell you something. Malls around here are, are practically dead. And this one especially. It's like the low-end mall. <laughs> and... You go to Sears and there's probably 10 cars in the entire parking lot. And of course, they're an end building, so it's really obvious. I mean, it looks like it's closed, but you go in there and there's, you know, one old guy sitting at the checkout and you go in there to get your tool and he's following you around. Hey, what do you need? What can I get you? I remember last time I was in there, I was looking for something they didn't have. And I was like, wow, they, they just stopped stocking stuff. They used to be the store where you could get anything. Not anymore, let me tell you. 
Oh, I remember what I was in there for. My tool shed when I did my backyard project. If you guys are coming from CigarObsession.com, you, you probably saw that video where I did that project. And Sears had the shed on sale. I think it was $2.99. Good deal, good price. So I went in to buy one. And they wouldn't even sell me the display model. I had to basically mail order it. I'm like, well, you know, I want it today. That's kind of the point. So he, the old guy checked around different stores for me, different Sears stores, and he found one way over in downtown Tampa. That would have been like a two-hour drive, plus driving home with the thing hanging out of the back of the car, because it was a huge box. You know, it, was, it was a shed. <laughs> Didn't really feel like they'd been doing that. So I stopped by at Home Depot, and it's a good thing I did, because they had the exact same shed, just with a different sticker, you know, made by the same company, whatever it is, probably China, who cares? Same price, regular price, as Sears's sale price. So I bought it at Home Depot, and they had two sitting there, you know, just a whole bunch of a whole bunch of different sheds in stock ready to go. So there's just no point at all in shopping at Sears, basically. Oh man, I got one left here, and it's right behind the bracket. Well, it's holding on the bracket that holds on the brake line and the speedometer. Boy, is this going to be tough to get to. Because I can barely fit my hand in here between the fender and the wheel as it is. But now to try to get a wrench on that, and I can't even see the nut. Fun, fun, let me tell you. Get on there. Alright, I can use fingertips to get it on the nut. Ah, make sure I'm not going the wrong way. <laughs> Let's see. Righty, tiny, lefty, loosey. Yeah, that, that's right. Oh, come on now. Starting to move. Ah, I got one fingertip on the end of the wrench. There we go. Woo. Uh, this is another one where it's one facet at a time. If I get it just a little loose and finger spin it, that would be very welcome. But I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> oh, I can't even get my fingers in there. All right, I got to work at this. I'll get this last nut off. And we'll get the fender off. All right, here it comes. Woohoo! That's what she said. Last bolt. I'm getting it by fingers. Luckily, then we'll take this fender off. Okay, so wrapping this up. Question of the day. Leave me your comments below what you think. Now I'm going to preface this and say anyone under 25 is probably not going to understand this. In fact, I know you're not. Because you weren't alive and shopping yet. Talking about online shopping, you know, there was a time before the internet period when there was no online shopping at all. Those of us that are older, we know exactly how that went, everything that went along with it. Now, you had a period of time where both coexisted and to some degree were pretty separate. You know, I'd say for a good five years there, Non-online shopping was still king. And these days, I'd say the last two or three years, online shopping has, aside from Walmart, pretty much killed every kind of brick and mortar store that I can think of. From specialties to department stores to entire malls, to the whole concept of a mall. So I want to know, what do you think is better? The days before online shopping or now, where a lot of stores are simply gone, out of business, never to return. And the ones that are left, it's even hard to see something in person before you make a purchase decision. Pretty much the, the way of today and for the foreseeable future is you order it by mail. If you don't like it, you have to send it back. Me, for a lot of things, I hate that. I think it is very inconvenient. I like being able to go somewhere and get something right now, seeing it in person, maybe deciding on a different decision. Just not an option with pretty much anything. Most stores, most stores have more on their online version than their in-person version. 
you know, the same store. I'm not talking like Amazon compared to anything else. That's a different topic. Oh, looks like I got uh, one bracket here holding the brake line in. Got to pop that out. It's a big bracket underneath the fender. Come on. I don't think I'm going to reuse this, but I'll be careful just in case. Besides, I don't want to bugger up the brake line. Should pop out pretty easy. It's only a big rubber half grommet thing. There we go. Alright, now I'm going to slide this metal bracket out from underneath the fender. Just that. And the fender should come out with a squeeze since it's plastic. Let me know your comments on that. I'd be interested in what you have to say. Maybe come out the front. There we go. Oh, persuasion. Oh. Damn, am I glad to be done with that friend, at least for the night. Wow, that looks different. <laughs> that looks very bare. Ah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Still can't see my vision yet, but uh, we're getting there. You know what? I'm going to pop this off real quick just because I want to see what it looks like. <laughs> Where did I put my keys? I put my keys in my tank cap, which is right here. Tomorrow's Sunday, so I don't know if I'm going to find a locksmith open, but I will try. Shouldn't be more than 20-30 bucks to get that re-keyed. This pops open. I am curious what's in this little kit. I didn't actually look. And I guess I can sell this. I, the lock cylinder isn't going to be to my bike anymore, so really I don't care about anybody knowing my pin, it's not valid. So here, this is all, I'm not gonna keep this. Uh, inside here, somebody's got some shoestring. Wow, there's actually uh, quite a bit of tools in here. Just a little plastic cover. I'm curious, make sure I'm still recording. Yes, I am. Have to say, I've done a couple dozen clips now with this new card and knock on wood, hasn't had a problem. So the, the Sandisk Extreme Pro, the super duper top of the line card, might be the hot ticket for GoPros, let me tell you. Looks like we've got a uh, really, really cheap Allen key set. Some of these pop metal wrenches and screwdrivers. Everything is rusty as hell. What is this, a razor? Got a razor. Kind of dangerous. <laughs> I think I'm just going to toss this entire thing, absolutely useless, and then a whole bunch of completely rusted tools. Make sure there's no specialty tools in here. Definitely not Suzuki, this is all, you know, dollar store looking stuff. Big ass Allen wrench, don't know what that's for, but I'll keep it just in case it's for the axle or something. Okay, here's a 24 and a 22 specialty wrench made in Japan. This is probably Suzuki. Hang on to these three at least. Don't know what they're for yet, but probably something I'm going to run into. And I know I'm going to need this, or at least I could use it. It's probably the stock uh, spark plug tool. Nah. No clue what this is. It looks like kind of some kind of flattened... Maybe uh, you put a wrench in it to extend it or something. Oh, you know what it might be? Yeah, it's probably for these. To make a handle. So these are probably for like the axles or some big high torque nut. Oh my god, something stinks in here. Whew, smells like something died. Ah, I'm very glad this is in here. This is a special spanner for adjusting the rear shock. So uh, that's nice to have. Hold on to that. And uh, just another big old rusty Allen wrench. And it's rusty old players, so that's that. 
17 and a 14. Probably two common Suzuki nuts on here. And this for the axle. No, might be for the rear though. I'll hold on to that. Even though I've got my own better ones. And I'll just whew, toss this guy. He reeks. Yeah, there's something something died in here. Stinky. Alright, that's it guys. Thanks a lot for watching. End of day five. I'll be continuing on. Not far to go before it's completely stripped. Next episode, I'm going to take the wheels off. Uh, probably start the valve adjustment. Just taking the engine cover off. Check this out. I think it's still got the pair system, the pulsed air. Probably leave that on. I don't mind it. I like the little pop on deceleration myself. A lot of people don't like it, so they take it off. It doesn't decrease the power any. It's just emissions. And then I'm just going to wait for some parts to come in before I start discarding more parts. Because right now, there's nothing left that I know besides the rear pegs I'm going to get rid of. Other things depends on what I do. So it'll be clean up. i got a lot of work to do on the wheels. The new tires should be in by the time I get that done. We'll get those mounted. And then I'm just going to start cleaning. Rear shock should come in sometime. I got the forks to do. I got the steering bearings to do. We'll take apart the triple tree. Whole bunch of stuff yet to do. See you next time.